What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? We are back again with another Mr. Wives video. And this one right here is Season 17, Episode 6. Just had to get that one correct. But of course, before we get into it, let's start off by giving a big massive shout out to every single person that is a member of the channel, that is a member of Patreon, and that is a subscriber as we continue to grow. And of course, by the time you finish this video, you're going to want to subscribe too. But with that being said, though, let's not waste any more time and let's get into this one if you dig what I'm saying. Steve, I need to tell Truly that I'm leaving her dad. So I need to talk to Cody and see if he's okay with us telling Truly that she needs to know sooner rather than later. Okay. Okay. I need to tell Truly that I'm leaving and tell him that I'm moving to Utah. I think it's super important. Some of the older kids know that I'm leaving Cody, but I haven't told Truly. And that's really what I'm most concerned about right now is her reaction. It's just getting close. So. I'm actually quite interested about the reaction to be fair with you. I wonder if it's going to be a, re a reaction of relief. Or, rela or, or a reaction of um, annoyance. I don't want to accidentally slip. Is Mel and Gwendolyn know? I mean, I really want to have Cody and I tell Truly together because I want her to see us as still a team because she's had friends that, whose parents have, have had divorces and it's been very ugly and a lot of fighting. And I don't want her to think that it's going to be like that for her. I don't know how I feel about that. I kind of, um, like I've heard so many kids be devastated by that kind of news. So I've been basically avoiding the idea of telling her in some idealistic and naive way, I still think maybe we can get reconciled. I like it's, cr it's crazy. I was just about to say legit. The only reason why he hasn't thought about it is because he's hoping for reconciliation. Exactly. But hey, we continue. Mm hmm. I guess maybe I'm just in a state of denial and I don't want to tell Truly yet. But there's so many other things to sort of put in place. I mean, like, um, first of all, I need to start taking her with me and maybe have her for a few days at a time. Okay. So I don't know why I haven't, just because I've been so busy with other things, but I don't know why I'm not having. The girls come over. I'd like Truly to come over to Robin's house and hang out with me. It's just, it, honestly, it's weird being over Christine's house. So I'm thinking of ways to actually get Truly out of this environment into really my environment and just see what happens there. I want her to come over every week. I okay. come over for three or four days. We'll get a bed for her or whatever, okay? I'd like a separate bedroom for her. What are you thinking? Um, we'll just, uh, that's, we'll, we'll get it worked out. Whatever it is. Okay. We'll, Thank you. Thank so you we'll, we'll figure that out. I... I mean, listen, to be honest with you, I'm surprised, but I'm also happy that Cody's been, um... He's been easy going about the situation when it comes to Truly, you know what I mean, moving forward. So I like that. Hey. I would love it if Cody took Truly for a few days. She would love it. She, she wants to be around him. She loves going over to Robin's house and playing with Solomon and Ariella. And that's something I would love him to have a great relationship with all of my kids. Here's the thing. When people are losing something, if you give them something, they don't feel like they're losing something. So when Truly um, comes back to see Cody and, and she's able to spend time with him, it will be at my house with me and my kids, which I'm actually looking forward to. I think it'll be a lot of fun. You know, I'm one of those people who think that miracles can happen. And I think there's always a chance that, like, Cody and Christine could figure something out, maybe a little bit later down the line. I just, you just. I'm not going to lie to you. Each time Robin speaks, it, the first thing that I think is, please stop talking. Because I don't really believe anything that's coming out of your mouth. Anything that she says that is supportive, hope, whatever, I just don't believe it. I mean, do you? Do you believe it? That's the question that I want to know. I mean, listen, if you believe her, then okay. If you don't believe her, like the video. If you believe you still like the video, though. <laughs> but let's continue. Just never know. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy for thinking that, but that's where my head goes. <laughs> I, I've got to think about telling her. I just don't. I don't want to tell it's her. Not a, she needs to be told. Yeah, it's not crap. I want her to have to deal with a 10 years old. I know, 11, but she's a smart kid. And she is going to realize something. I'm, I don't know why, but I'm really just anxious about doing anything but delaying this. And so I would... I'd like to find some way to get Christine to stay here and, um, you know, just make it uh, sort of easier, more convenient for me to just hang out with the kids. Boom! Yeah, or oh, hear that? To make it more convenient for me. Bro, <laughs> if you wanted things to be more convenient for yourself, then you should have been a, you should have done a better job of being a better husband, Christine, as well as the other wives. But you didn't. So your convenience isn't important. Your convenience isn't relevant. What's relevant is Christine doing the right thing for herself. And if it means moving that little bit further away, it is what it is. And the only person that you can put the blame on is you. So don't talk about convenience for yourself. Mm -hmm. Kids. You know, I know that since Christine's kids all started ending up back in the Salt Lake City, Utah area, she's really wanted to go there. And I get that. Like, I feel torn all the time. I want to go where my kids are. Thank goodness I have kids here. I, I don't see anything that would keep her here in Flagstaff. I've been packing like I'm packing up decorations slowly, packing up stuff we don't use very often. I'm packing up stuff. I'm trying to clear spots in the garage so I can put boxes in there. Oh yeah, your stuff in the garage. I packed up Cody's stuff 
and I moved it out to the garage. And I just looked this morning and he's moved some of the boxes out, but he also has tons of stuff in the garage still. So he needs to get his stuff moved out. It's time. Do you want to go look stuff? in the garage right now and I'll just point out the stuff? Do you want to go look in there? And then if I'm not home, you can just take stuff. No, we can wait. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. I don't want to move my stuff out. Christine moved me out. I didn't want her to move me out. I didn't give her permission to move me out. You know, I, I, I've tried to give my wives sort of the sovereignty to the, feel like they've got control over their lives. And in doing so, I made it so I had no control over mine. Okay, what about, are you going to want your food storage? Are you going to want... It's not mine. It was paid for with was the family, out. but I mean, some of it's yours because it was the family's. Just take it. I'll serve them. We buy five 50 pound bags of flour at a time, put them in the food storage room and get the flour when we need it. You know, and we buy oats, buy the bulk, buy 50 pound bags. We stock we up We don't buy just one room. case, we buy four cases. Yeah, we stock up the food storage room. This food storage thing is something that's very cultural for us. You know, it's taught by our church to like have food storage in case the end of the world comes. You need to have enough food to feed your family. Sorry, Robin, but to be honest with you, the end of the world for this family started when you arrived. For when the economy collapses, when the second coming of Christ comes. Like a flood, uh, a, a snowstorm where you can't get out, uh, tornadoes. It was just something that was taught. My mother always had it, my grandmother had it. Nope, I don't really have any food storage. <laughs> I can see the wisdom of it, um, especially after, after the shortage of stuff in the shelves during COVID. Now I get having extra water, and I do usually keep water on hand. We bought this as a family. It's, it was like family works together. We've been buying our homes together. We've been buying the land together. And I'm like, well, do you want your share of this food storage? And Christine's like, no, <laughs> that, I think that's stupid. Do you want me to just get it all out? I do. All the food storage. Everything, all the food storage. I'm not part of the Mormon faith. I'm not part of our church anymore. I don't know even where I stand religiously. I don't know. But as far as the belief in food storage and things like that, I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to live in fear like that. So I honestly just sometimes struggle with the, with the rush. I just don't understand it. And Christine has left the building. Yes, she's no longer religious or she's religious, but she doesn't know where, where she, she lies. Okay, cool. Cool. Well, at least that's cleared up. I know that was a rumor anyway going around before the short edge. So at least now we know where Christine stands at this moment in time. And I think it is something that further on proves that she is definitely looking to go in the more uh, monogamous lifestyle rather than the um, poly lifestyle ever again. Because that's another thing that was rumored as well. But yeah, pretty much giving us that confirmation. It feels hostile to me. I feel like she's done this as a backstab because she could have started talking to me about our relationship a long time ago. And she didn't. And she drops this on me. Then the next thing comes. Then the next thing comes. And to me, it seems really, really rushed. She's been ready to get out the door from the time that she told me she wanted me to stop staying. Well, for you, maybe it's been a rush. But for me, it hasn't been a rush. For me, I've been moving. My name's Cody Brown and I feel robbed. Oh, you feel robbed, do you, mate? Do you, mate? Do you really feel robbed? Who gives a damn how you feel? Mm-hmm super slow just to accommodate you frankly i would have moved a lot faster i would have told truly months and months ago that i would have moved this summer so september was always the goal but i told him that for months now my life's in limbo right now i'm really going anywhere while i wait until september when i can sell and move okay so we'll wait on truly you want me to get things arranged okay. i mean in the end i'm still not going to tell truly cody is not ready to tell truly and i want to play nice and i want to play fair because we need to be a team we need to move forward as a team we're going to be co-parenting truly for the rest of her life Here's, here's the thing she's been thinking about something for a long time that's if cody of course the man himself does actually end up sticking to his guns and co-parenting for the rest of our lives because Cody Ray brown already has enemies with some of his children anyway so yeah well, who knows but hey we continue here's, here's the thing she's been thinking about something for a long time and then she makes a decision presents it to me and she wants me to answer right now I'm not ready to make a decision about that with Truly, and I would prefer, at this moment, not to tell her. See, if it's me now, and I am uh, Christine, I would push to tell as soon as possible, because he's stalling and stalling. Why? Because he's hope that he's there's hope that you're going to stick around. Unless Christine is going to stick around, she needs to be like, no, we're going to tell her ASAP, because, well, I got to get moving ASAP. So, uh, yeah. And also, we got to explain why your stuff is getting moved out of the house. Well. That stuff goes noticeable. At the end of the day, I want you to move your stuff out as quick as possible. So if I'm Christine, I'll push for it if you dig what I'm saying. But hey, make sure you like the video and subscribe. But anyway, we continue. Cody doesn't feel like he can be away from the little kids at Robin's house more than two or three days at a time. So our trips are always constrained by that. So he has to hurry and get home and do a rapid test to make sure he's not carrying COVID so he can go home to, to Solinari. Cody and his priorities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And look, shock horror, which kids were mentioned. Make sure he's not carrying COVID so we can go home to, to Solinari. I've been away from the kids for quite a while. 
And I'm trying still very hard to protect my younger children. And I really appreciate when wives will allow me to protect my younger children. I appreciate wives who are supporting me, which is trying to be careful with what's going on with COVID. My relationship with Cody has not improved as far as like a husband and wife relationship. Like that's um, not something that he's um, interested in. I mean, it just is what it is. It's where we are. Should we be surprised? Should we? Should we be surprised? No, we shouldn't be surprised. Ah, oh, my own age with Cody. It's a marriage. Just, just, just be quiet. Just, just, just be quiet. <laughs> like. <laughs> you get to my nerves, man. It's like you've been protesting the same thing for how long now and you're still here. Why would you have to follow Christine? I feel like my relationship with Mary is very good, but it's not a married situation. It's an amiable relationship, but I don't think it's a fulfilling relationship for Mary, not in any way. So he recognized that it's not a fulfilling relationship for Mary in any kind of way, but yet he still continues. Should I even finish the rest of that sentence? Right now, I'm in the call of bitterness with Christine. On the other hand, I have a fondness for Mary because Mary and I are getting along. I don't know what is healed, but I'm not feeling betrayed by Mary. I feel betrayed by Christine. <laughs> I feel betrayed by Christine. <laughs> do you? Do you? Do you? So how do you think Christine feels? If you feel betrayed by Christine, think about the fact that she left you. How about you think about how she feels? You may feel betrayed by her, but think about how much it took her for, to finally leave you, which means however you feel cannot equal how she feels because how she feels gave her the power to leave you. So you can talk about feeling betrayed all you want, but where's the betrayal? It's only, it can only be on your side because you gave her the oomph, the courage, the strength to finally say, you know what, enough is enough. If anything, the betrayers from you letting her down and not being the man you were supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I would have never bought this RV. If we were a normal monogamous couple, we would have had to come to an agreement on this. It feels in some ways like it was just pushed, thrust on me. You know, like this is what we're going to do. And that's kind of how I look at it. It's like, oh, I was just forced into moving into an RV. I, I'm not really kicking and screaming, I, but it just wasn't ever really a choice for me. It's just what she did. You know, it's funny because he says if it was in a normal relationship, I didn't realize people that lived in a poor lifestyle lived as if their relationship wasn't a normal one. Sorry, that, that one really took me back. As if I was on a I'm like, bro, are you, aren't you not in a normal relationship? But okay, whatever. You know, I'm saying each, each is if, each is if, each is, each is of their own. Um, and um, it's crazy though, because he talks about how if it had been in a monogamous relationship, we could have had this discussion or whatnot. Well, that's not true because you can still have the same discussion even in a poor relationship. I'm pretty sure from what I understand that Regardless of what type of relationship you're in, whether you are on a poly or, or you're on a mono, either way, or not monogamy, yeah, either way, communication is still the same thing. I would, if anything, I would, I would imagine communication needed to be that bit more um, of an effort, to be fair, if you're in a relationship with multiple people as well, you know, because obviously everyone has to be on the same page. And you know what I mean? Because you've got so many different perspectives at that point. So him talking about how this would have been different in a, in a, in a, in a, in a monogamy relationship is BS to me. Like, really? Really? Uh, this guy, the things that comes out of his mouth. Anyway, man, we continue with this nonsense. <laughs> I'm answering the papers, and then it's a bathroom you share with Matt with Evie. I'm not bringing anything other than my clothes. Cody got her a car. It's a good, reliable, so we can drive across country. I talked to Cody, invited him to do it with us. I would totally adjust whatever plans if he wanted to come and if he could come, but he's not coming with us. You know any time I spend time with Isabel? I spend most of my time doing a lot of work to draw her out of herself. I don't know what it is. I don't think that I'm that big an ogre. I don't know why she's not talking to me. I'm open to her. I don't know what it is. You excited? I'm excited. Yeah. I'm sorry I can't go. It's okay. So you're not going to become a bitter old housewife? No. Because your daddy not. didn't do this for you? No. I think Isabel is probably hurt that I didn't go. But there are people depending on me. More than just Isabel. It just wasn't going to work in this case. I would have done it if we wouldn't have had the COVID thing. But once again, Christine sees this as an excuse. She sits there and talks to the kids. She has their ear. I do not have their ear. I would describe my relationship with my dad as, I'm, it's fine. I'm not at all like, I'm gonna miss my mom more than I'm gonna miss him, I think, because I don't actually think we're close at all. But I mean, he's still my dad. So I think that I've been able to adjust to the idea of mom and dad getting a divorce more. So I think that they both deserve to be happy. And I, I don't think anybody can be happy in a loveless marriage. Was... Listen, man, in, in, in her head, she's like, yes. 
But on camera, she's like, yeah, you know, it's a lot of dirty stuff. And yeah. Trying to be trying to look respectful, shall I say. But um, yeah, anyway, we continue. Uh, but I actually didn't know that Isabel was actually bisexual, to be fair. That's something they did say in this episode, too. So that, that, that's, that's new as well. Um, so you've got, so you got Isabel's bisexual, and you've got Leon, who's now. What was his name before? Leon. Things with M. Let me know in the comment section, please. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, let me know. Let me know. Anyway, let's continue, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Out onto the property. What do you guys think about the situation? I think it's so exciting. What was that, truly? Mm-hmm. Our biggest concern, my biggest concern, the girl's biggest concern is Savannah, and if she's really okay with this adventure. I think we should all get trailer homes and just park out here. I would never, but I think it's awesome that she's gonna just sounds just like her. It sounds just like her. Like, I'm excited for her. Mary would not live in an RV. Robin would not live in an RV. Uh, Christine would not live in an RV. None of us want to live in an RV. Like this is not this is not probably the first best choice. I'm doing this for a reason. I don't know if it's gonna save us a lot of money except for rent. But what it does for me psychologically is it makes me it, it engages me with the land instead of just like we own this piece of land out of town and I have my life in town. I just say it for real. Say it for real. <laughs> so a few days ago, when they were up at the B and B, she couldn't pull out like all the pop outs. So um, this time they've got it all pulled out, and so I can see like the full space and see what it really looks like. Have you started moving your stuff in? No, not yet. We were we were yeah, struggling. like ten days, right? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> you have to know at two o'clock in the morning the pilot LPM wears off, and I'm like, <laughs> I to, I take, another one, take another one. Take another one. I still have about a week before I have to be out of the rental, and the move has proven more challenging and more time consuming than I thought. Hi, Annie. Hi. Hey. Hi. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure that everybody really wants to move out on this property. Christine doesn't have any interest. She said that. I really would be shocked if Robin, Cody, and Mary ever end up building out here. Uh, that's fine. I'll have a great view. I'll just build my house and have a great view. You know what I mean? Like if there's- I don't know why she's so concerned about everybody else. To be fair, you made the choice and uh, that's it. <laughs> that's about it. You know what I mean? But yeah, we continue. No other houses out there. The dream for me is absolutely to build on Coyote Pass. I think we are going to pull it off. I just think we didn't expect some of the like real estate issues that we've had. You know, once we're able to pay off the property, I think we're, we're going to build. I do feel like I'm kind of losing the excitement of it. Um, it just hasn't felt like anybody else really, really wants it. And especially Cody. So I don't know what's going to happen with it, to be honest with you. Cody, the battery didn't charge, so there's no lights. The batteries aren't charged? Yeah, the solar didn't charge. I don't know, maybe because of the smoke. So I'm a little bit discouraged because I need the battery to run a lot. The lights, the fridge, everything. So at this point, and I'm hoping that we fix this soon, but I'm, I'm boondocking. I don't have any hookups. There's, there's no septic, there's no water, and there's no power. I'm not a big fan of trailers. I don't think anybody should have to live in them. Despite my concerns about her and Cody living in a, you know, trailer like this, um, I'm going to... I wouldn't say that, Robin. You know, there's a lot of people that love to live in trailers. So uh, be careful what you say there. It might offend a couple of people, you know what I mean? Come on now. Mm-hmm. Put on my happy face and be happy for her. Hey, you have a new house. I know, it's, it's big, right? You know, it's really big. That's the only way I knew I could do this thing. One thing I will say about Christine, no matter what she thinks, she's going to always try to make you feel better about whatever's going on. You know, you do have storage right there. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can put shoes in there or soup. Yeah, <laughs> or maybe like containers for cooking, pots and pans. Yeah, maybe. The, the silly part of this is that Janelle is trying to sell everybody how cool this is because she thinks it's cool. Well, Christine and Mary don't think it's cool at all. They think it's stupid. And so they are teasing Janelle. Oh, this is awesome. I would never, ever live in this, but it's awesome for you. Wait a minute, before we go in, how do you... <laughs> oh my Cody. I'm gonna lie to you, man. I, it actually bothers me sometimes I see him smile. I actually don't like to see this guy happy at all because he's <laughs> You know there's, there's just some people in life when they smile it gets under your skin, you're just like you don't deserve to be smiling right now. Or ever a mean person, you're a narcissist. You like it. I think it's pretty great. Cool. You do? Are you excited to do this? Yeah. Are you? Ah! Are you really excited for this? Yeah. Uh, I was. I didn't want to do it until mom said that it had two bathrooms. So. Yeah, it two bathrooms. Oh, so you got a whole bathroom. Yeah. I'm impressed with Savannah's attitude. I was telling my kids, you don't always have a choice on what we do, but you just have a choice on your attitude. This, this is our kitchen. kitchen. Well, oh, wow. This is our half size fridge with freezer. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh and a freezer? Yeah, oh, that's yes. a fridge. So the fridge is really decent sized, and she has more cupboard space than I thought. She has a lot more space than I thought she would. I think she can make this work. This is better than I thought it would be. So this it's is gorgeous. Room. This is your room? Yeah. All right. Oh, this so is cute. Cute. I can't decide where I'm going to sleep, but. Um, you can choose every single night. Yeah, the last. That is so cool. Shut the door, let's see. Savannah needs some privacy. This is the area I was most concerned about because I know Savannah and I know she's very particular on space. So I was just concerned she would have a place where she could just shut the door and do her own thing. And she can. Okay, come on, girls. We're going to Torchinelle's room. So, my bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. That's a great shower. I think for a trailer, it's pretty good. It's great. I don't actually believe that I will ever use this bathroom. It's just too small. Uh, I'll. And this is, this is actually getting to my nerves, man. Like, why are they all so judgmental over a freaking caravan? That caravan is better, is better than a lot of people's homes, may I say. There's a lot of people that are living in homes that are not to that freaking standard, okay? You know what I mean, okay? But they get on with it, and they appreciate the fact that they got a home, and that's it. These fools right here, every single one of them, every single one of them, been ungrateful. 
RB is nice, you know. I would live in that RV. You know, it's better than most of the places that I lived in. God damn, such judgmental fools. Oh, sorry, man. It's getting my nerves. Hey, people like that, man. So so snobby. I'll shower somewhere else. And then my room. Yes. Oh no, it's really um, no, oh, this is great. It's big. This is bigger than I thought. The bed is big enough, but for me to to like bring a suitcase here, where am I going to put the suitcase? The contrast I'll be living in between Janelle's house and, and Robin's house is going to be so significant. I get my exercise going up and down the stairs and down the hallway at Robin's house. I, I, I'm going to come in here, sit down, and not be able to move my elbows. Well, uh, <laughs> that's a bath. This is really cool. A tiny bath, more like a foot walk. And then it shut, this door shuts, so Savannah can have her own little that's awesome. apartment cool. thing. So he's like, going to be for like doggies? Um, this is Savannah's bedroom. This is their bedroom. Oh, no, the dogs will live outside here. No, they will not. So I have two dogs. One is Brindle. She's this fat little sausage. And then I have my mom's dog, Jack. So I do have two. You know, in, in my mind, I still feel like my bedroom is, is uh, a sacred place for me and my wife to uh, associate with each other in any variety of ways. And the dog shouldn't be there. Man says me and my wife. So enough space for me and my wife to associate with, to associate with each other. Okay, bro. Okay, bro. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's just pretend. Let's just let's just pretend you and uh, um, Janelle are actually in that kind of uh, space. This guy. This guy. So. Mm -hmm. The dogs. Yeah, dude, I'm sorry. Like you're here one day in four, maybe three. And uh, I'll choose the dogs. Gonna choose the dogs. Gonna choose the kids. Gonna choose the dogs. Can I run and hide, please? I don't want to be here for this conversation. Um, yeah. You guys should come out. We'll have a barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> when you get all moved in. I guess Janelle living in this trailer wouldn't be too far off of the mobile home that we lived in with Cody and me and Janelle and Christine. When you're living in a three bedroom mobile home with three wives, it just gets, it's very, you have to have a lot of patience and you have to be very aware of your surroundings. All right, lovelies, let's say goodbye because I have somewhere to go. You guys are the best. Good luck. This is fun. I'm just so nervous for Janelle. I'm the fact that they have this experience as well, and this is how they're reacting, like, wow. So nervous for Janelle. I hope it works for her. I don't want to be a downer at all for her, but gosh, I just don't think Cody's going to like it there at all. Just saying it. He loves his routines and his comfort. Whoa, 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 whoa. You've left Cody. Was it, what, why are you concerned? No, you left him. Now, don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry about Cody. In fact, even if he was doing, don't worry about Cody. If he's going to be fussy with it, that's Cody being fussy. It's as simple as one two, three, you know what I mean, okay? I wouldn't worry about Cody being fussy, man. To be honest with you, I'd rather, I'd, I would actually want to put him in, in, in as much fussy situation as possible because, well, mm, it's Cody. But yeah, we continue. Mm-hmm. Hurts and a bigger house. And it's just like another excuse to stay at Robin's house, sorry. Mm, Robin makes mm, it convenient for me to be there. She, uh, you know, enforces. Ooh, I caught that last bit there. That is a fair point. Gives him an excuse. Gives him more of an excuse to stay at at um at um Robin's house. You know what? That's a fair point. That's a fair point. I can't even argue with that one. To be fair with you, yeah. But then again, though, look at it this way. Why would Janelle even want to spend time with Cody if he's not even going to touch her anyway? You know what I mean? And I mean, with the kids, on the other hand, I I've lost track which kids he actually gets on with and ones that he doesn't get on with. To be honest with you, so yeah. It's just so annoying and frustrating because. The more you watch them, you're just thinking to yourself, like, Mary isn't important, Janelle isn't important, Christine's now left, she's not important. Really and truly, why can't I just be Cody and, and Robin? That's it, moving forward. Because that's where it's always been anyway, for goodness how many seasons. So just leave it as that. But you know what? They all come back together. Why? Because they just want to continue to get paid by TLC. <laughs> I don't know, but hey, mm, we continue. And it's just like another excuse to stay at Robin's house, sorry. Robin makes mm, it convenient for me to be there. She, uh, you know, enforces my relationship or reinforces my relationship with my children. Okay, see you guys later. See ya. Bye bye. bye. Congratulations on your new yes, home. Yes, thank you. Peace. I know that Janelle and Cody have had a lot of time. So, because, so Robin re re reinforces your relationship with your children. So that's what makes Janelle, Robin so superior? I mean, listen, the way I say it, as a parent, you reinforce yourself in your child's life all the time. You don't need someone else to do it for you. Hey through the last year year and a half because of covid is this going to be something that brings them together because they're working together on this rv or is it going to be something that you know they're frustrated he's frustrated that this got chosen i just keep praying for them uh it sounds like you're worried that it's going to bring them together to be honest with you I'm about praying for them you're praying that you shouldn't be praying that that, that things don't go well for them mm -hmm. praying that they'll get some of this stuff figured out see you also it's interesting how the conversations about Robin, what about Mary though? Is he not going to want to go see Mary more now? <laughs> see how Mary is just irrelevant? I don't know why Mary is still here. It, the, the, 
Mary is the most baffling character of them all. I don't know. I have no idea why she's here. If you're not around a lot for a wife, she takes it personal. She starts to feel like a victim. She feels like plural marriage is unfair. In this case, Janelle has a tiny little kitchen and a tiny little house and a tiny little bathroom. And if I'm not around, she will start to feel like she's marginalized. But she made choices that are major inconvenience to me, to my lifestyle, because she wanted she wanted this RV. Now I'm, I'm, there's an inclination for me to go, well, it's, I've got hot water at Robin's house. You know, why am I going to sit here and suffer with you with your choices? The situation is and is what it is. Janelle made a choice. I will accommodate that choice as best I can and then make my own choices. So when Kelsey called me. Oh, due to the sensitive nature of this topic, Christine spoke to fully off camera about Cody leaving. Fair enough. That was the worst conversation of my life. Um, so, um, truly overheard me on the phone with McKelty. Stupidly, I was talking downstairs. I thought she was, anyway, she overheard that. And I said, I'm not blaming Christine, but this is why I was saying that she should have pushed the tell truly as soon as possible. Well, I mean, this wasn't actually the reason, but something like this is something that could also happen as well when you prolong things. That's why it would have been better if it was pushed to be done quicker rather than wait. And it's crazy because she left Cody. And she, so therefore, she's in no line to have to listen to Cody's request really truly. I mean, don't get me wrong, in some situations, in a lot of situations, it's healthy to just want to listen anyway, you know what I mean? But in other situations, you just got to do what's best for your child. Anyway, oh God. Oh God. So when Kelsey called me right as I was walking downstairs into the kitchen. She's so excited I'm moving to Utah. And I said, yeah, I'm excited to move too. And then I heard a gasp. Then I looked behind me and there was Truly. Cody and I were going to talk to Truly together. We just hadn't come to an agreement. Um, but I, I obviously didn't have a choice anymore. So I sat Truly down and I, I told her we're moving. And she started to cry. And she goes, when? And I said September. And then she's in tears and she's like, well, can I just go to my room? I said, well, there's more love. You're gonna pee on death. I knew that she hadn't quite clocked that I was leaving Cody. And rather than let her leave the room and go process this, she needs to know everything. And I said, it's just you and I that are moving. It's just the two of us. And she goes, are you and dad getting divorced? And her little face was so heartbroken. I could have said, yeah, we're going to be getting divorced. And then every time Cody would come over, she'd be watching us like crazy and worrying and wondering. And then also she might have this false sense of hope that we would get back together again. So I said, well, love, we're already divorced. And she's like, what? <laughs> and so she started crying again. In plural marriage. I mean, the good news is that Cody has some form of a relationship with Trudy, where Trudy obviously cares about mom and dad being together. So that's a good thing in terms of that. You know, at least we know that she has no, um, she, she's not overjoyed about the fact that mom and dad are not together, you know. So that's a healthy sign in terms of that. But it's sad because it's only healthy because of who Cody is. But then again, to be fair, it's healthy in any situation, to be honest with you, you know what I mean? Like when you hear that mommy and dad are broken up, you, you, you want to see that your child's going to be unhappy about it because at least you know that mom, that, you know, that that child loves you both, you know, and wants you to be both to be together, but he's still going to continue to love you both. If you're in a situation where the child is like, yes, it, it, but then it depends on the age of the child. If it's a teenage kid who sees that mommy and dad are not happy, you know what? It's, it's kind of getting a bit pig now to be. Damn. You know what? Okay, in this situation in Robin Cody, it's 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 like, ah no no yeah it, it's 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 good for Cody to see his child upset because he knows his child loves him. But at the same time, in a lot of situations, it's not good because you want your because you want your child to be open to the fact that it's time to break up because we're not happy. But also at the same time, it's good to break up when you're not working because it's a role model to the child to know that you don't have to stick with someone if you're unhappy for them in the future. So you are sitting on a role. But there's so many different perspectives you can look at it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God damn. I nearly had, my, nearly had myself in a pickle there, but I saved it. Yes. And there's so much more that I could say, but let's continue. When you're not married legally, you usually have to go through some sort of a separation procedure kind of a thing. And I didn't know if Cody and I were actually divorced until this second. I just thought we were going to be divorced. I didn't know when we would actually be divorced because there's not ever going to be a piece of paper from the government that says you're divorced because we were never married legally. So I just really quickly made up my mind and told her, no, we're already divorced. But I just wanted her to see that it was already done, already done deal. And so I just said, you know what? Have you noticed anything really that different between dad and I? Have you noticed that we're not getting along? Have you noticed that um, he's not really sleeping here anymore? And she's just thought for a minute. She goes, no. 
Gwendolyn and Isabel are moving out in a couple of months. It's not like we see everybody that often. We don't see Cody that often. We don't see anybody else in the family that often. And we've been alone here, and we would be more alone. And she would be lonely here. But in Utah, we'll be right in between Aspen and McKelsey where they live. We're gonna see them all the time. They just envelop her when she's around them. And it's what I wanna give her for the rest of her life, is to be surrounded and just enveloped in love. And I can get that for her in a couple of months. I want a relationship with my children, especially those who are young and vulnerable. So it's almost like this is just following a narrative. She sets truly up with, well, dad's never here anyway, right? I mean, she's leading truly down the road. So if my, children, my, my relationship is bad with my younger children, it's not always my fault. It's that I haven't had a mother who's been willing to actually help that. And <laughs> you know, in many situations, I would agree with this. Sometimes you can have mothers that can be toxic to the child to you. But Cody has been his own problem. So therefore, this does not stand for you. This is your fault, in my opinion. Christine here, needing excuses to be able to leave, has been setting things up, I feel like, for a very long time, to justify this to her children. Yeah, she's like, well, can I just go be alone now? I'm like, yeah, you can just go be alone. She went to her room and cried. I have just said the hardest thing to my little girl, and I don't know what else to say. I don't know what's going to make it better. I just know that I'm going to remember this moment for the rest of my life. as the day I broke Julie's heart. <laughs> It was awful. It was awful. And as much as I know it's the right thing to do, today is just really hard. And now I have to tell Cody too that she knows. Gosh. I feel like a pretty cruddy mom today. <laughs> I mean, I'm making the right decision. It's not that I'm not, but it doesn't make it any easier. Next time on Sister Wife. It's sad that Christine obviously had to break the news by herself. This is a news that obviously both of them needed to be there for to break it too, truly. So it is sad that she did to do it herself, you know what I mean? Because that's not the way. Um, but I think, to be honest, it was inevitable that she wouldn't do it by herself because Cody was stolen. And because he was stolen, it, made, it didn't help in any way whatsoever. But hey, nonetheless, though, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you're thinking down below in the comment section and we'll most certainly talk about it. But hey, don't forget to like, subscribe and 